Peter Pan and Wendy comes to us from David Lowry, the man who recently made The Green Knight and was also the director of A Coast Story, The Old Man and the Gun, but he also, of course, directed the live-action Pete's Dragon remake a few years ago. And so this is his second live-action Disney remake. And as you can probably guess, this story follows the Peter Pan story that you know from the animated film and the original bedtime stories that you probably heard as a kid. And Wendy shows up in Neverland along with her two brothers, and now they have to take on Captain Hook who is hell-bent on killing Peter Pan for reasons that, of course, the film goes into. And along with the help of the Lost Boys and Tiger Lily, they have to somehow stop him. This is a film that has the basic story beats, you know, as you would expect them to be from those Peter Pan stories. It doesn't try and do something exponentially different from those. But really, I was more interested in what Lowry brings to the table. Because I think as a filmmaker, he's one of the best we have right now, one of the most creative. And if anything, there's a whimsical sense to it that he can bring because he has a very good, you know, handle when it comes to what makes emotions in a film really come out and really come forward beyond the spectacle. And I think for the most part, Peter Pan and Wendy does that pretty well because this is a film that prides itself on having a lot of those moments where you're connecting with the characters in some very interesting ways. There's some moments, especially with characters like Hook, which I didn't expect to have as much resonance to, but the film did hone in on that. And I would say that as far as the Disney live action remakes go, this is definitely one of the better ones and probably the best one in ages, at least since 2016. I would say this is the best one, which was ironically the last one was Pete's Dragon. But I like this more than the Beauty and the Beast one too, which I didn't mind too much. But my track record has been pretty bad with them since then, and I borderline even hated a few that were recent. But I did not have that same issue over here. I had more fun watching this one. Is it as good as Pete's Dragon? I'll leave that to the viewer, um, but I had a really good time with Peter Pan and Wendy. And a lot of that is once again due to Lowry. What does, is it, he, and a lot of that is once again due to Lowry. I think he does a great job directing it, and it's a really fun and whimsical film and full of wonder and joy. And yeah, there are moments where it gets a little dark and it gets a little intense with the storytelling, but it does pull back on that a little bit. I would say that's probably the one issue that I'm going to hear come up the most because it does have moments where it wants to be darker, but it doesn't quite reach that because it stays within those PG rated constraints. So yeah, those could have definitely been improved upon, but what we get even with those some of them definitely did land quite well. And the performances that you get from the entire cast, I think they were really great. I think some standouts, of course, Ever Anderson as uh, Wendy was fantastic. I thought she did a really, really great job. I thought Jude Law as Captain Hook was having so much fun in this movie. I think some of the most fun he's had in a role in years. He was really, really great at this. The actress who plays Tiger Lily, she kind of steals the movie in a couple of spots, I thought. She was really great in it too. The Lost Boys, everybody was great. And the actor who plays Peter, I thought he did a really, really good job. Uh, Tinkerbell was also really good. I didn't really have any issues when it came to the performances. Everybody actually, you know, seemed like they genuinely were very invested in what was going on. Which is another note because one of the issues that I've had with some of the live action remakes was that the performances at times felt very, like, disconnected from what was happening. And that's not because the actors in them especially were, like, you know, bad or anything. There were some great ones. It's just a case of the direction around it. It didn't feel like it was as committed as it could be. That's not quite the case over here. Everyone feels like they're really tapped into the storytelling over here and in terms of what Lowry's trying to do. And it does work. The score by Daniel Hart is fantastic. He once again is doing great here like he has done on some of other uh, the other Lowry movies that have come before this. The visuals were also really great. I saw a couple of comments from like some fellow critics that they found it to be a little dull. I can only speak to my viewing experience because I was watching it on like my screen. I, it looked fine to me. <laughs> like it looked colorful enough. I don't know man. I don't know what it is. Um, maybe it's my TV settings. I don't know. It looked fine. Than on mine. I thought it looked like pretty great, actually. So, um, yep. I like the. I that's 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 what I got to uh, 
what I got to say about that. But one of the things that I really liked about this film is some of that surprising emotional resonance that it has. There are some moments where it definitely does hone in on some of those character beats quite extensively. I wish it actually did that a little bit more because some of those were the best parts of the movie for me. But one issue that I did have with it, it does sort of run through certain aspects. Like there are some story beats and character beats that I feel like it could have been a little more grounded in and it could have done a little bit more with those. Uh, and yeah, it's a familiar story. You've not seen anything which is like wholly different. But I think if, if it had just a little more time given to some of those poignant moments that it brings up, I think it, it could have been a little more stronger. As it stands, did I still enjoy the movie overall? Absolutely. I still, like I said, think this is one of the better live-action Disney movies. I think it's easily their best one in years. I had a great time watching it, and I do recommend checking it out. I am curious to hear what people think. I Honestly, the thing about embargoes lifting is that you really don't know how it's going to go, but... I liked it. I, I think I, I had a genuinely good time with Peter Pan and Wendy, and for me, David Lowry's streak does continue, and I would rather watch this over any of the other recent live-action remakes for sure. I'm gonna give Peter Pan and Wendy an 8 out of 10. I had a great time! Like, I, I genuinely was very, very pleased with the film, and so, yeah, good stuff. Go check it out. It's on Disney+, Plus. it's, yep, yeah, 4K, whatever. Have a look. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the movies.